Uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier on, uh, Ireland is supposed to be a militarily neutral country according to its constitution and traditional policy, at least uh, up until uh, the Vietnam War. And indeed afterwards, most people in Ireland still believed that a policy of military neutrality uh, pertained. Um, and that policy obviously is part of the legacy of the Irish Revolution and the Irish struggle for independence uh, in the 1920s, which at least uh, freed the south of Ireland from the yoke of uh, the British Empire. So the idea of opposing empire, uh, of standing with people who are subject uh, to empire, uh, is deeply embedded in the Irish uh, popular consciousness among the majority of people. But uh, the Irish government uh, have utterly betrayed uh, this tradition, this proud tradition of, I mean, neutrality in a way isn't almost, it's described as neutrality, but really uh, what it is, uh, is a, a deep-seated opposition to empire uh, and a sympathy uh, with those resisting uh, empire. And the Irish government, despite the fact that it continues to claim to be the inheritor, the party Fianna Fáil that has dominated the Irish state, claims to be the inheritor of the Irish revolutionary tradition, has in fact engaged in an utterly uh, brutal betrayal of that uh, proud uh, tradition. To the extent that uh, one million, as of I think about mid, uh, midway through uh, this year, uh, the millionth US troop uh, soldier uh, passed through Shannon Airport in the southwest of Ireland en route to fight in Iraq. Uh, so making Shannon Airport the major transport hub for the movement of US troops uh, into the theatre of war uh, in, uh, in Iraq. To the extent that uh, the road between uh, the Baghdad Airport and uh, the Green Zone in Baghdad is known as Road Irish by the US troops uh, because uh, it's, the Shannon Airport is part of the conveyor belt uh, for uh, the US war machine into, uh, into Iraq. Uh, the collaboration of the Irish government with the US war machine is also, as it has elsewhere, extended into the uh, disgraceful facilitation of a CIA flights known to be involved in the so-called renditions program, uh, of course a program that uh, by any uh, real definition uh, is uh, a program of uh, kidnap and torture, legal uh, kidnap and torture. And the Irish government, uh, faced with a popular outcry about uh, the uh, presence of these CIA, CIA flights, flights in Ireland, uh, uh, asked us to believe that they had sought assurances from George Bush that no prisoners were present on the planes when they were in uh, Irish airports and Bertie Ahern, the Irish Prime Minister, assured the Irish public that he had got strict assurances from George Bush that absolutely no prisoners would have been on the planes when they were in Ireland uh, and w the Irish public were asked to believe that because of course George Bush is a man uh, we know always tells the truth. And, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, uh, but the extent, of, uh, the extent of Ireland's collaboration with the US war machine I think really came home to me very, very starkly with what Ibrahim Moussaoui mentioned earlier on. Because really to me what happened in the last uh, few months in Ireland is a shocking indication of uh, the now utter complete subservience of the Irish government. Uh, to whatever, to any whim of the US government. We'd organized a tour for Ibrahim Moussaoui about a year ago, brought him around the country, hugely successful tour, uh, hundreds and hundreds of people attending all the meetings. We arranged a meeting between Ibrahim Moussaoui and the Department of Foreign Affairs to brief uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs from somebody who had knowledge on the ground of the situation in southern Le Lebanon, which was relevant because some Irish troops were going to be placed there. Uh, and uh, that was all allowed. Fully, uh, the Irish government were fully aware of it and had no problem whatsoever. In fact, benefited from the visit of Ibrahim Moussaoui to Ireland. And yet when we, uh, about six weeks ago, organised for Ibrahim to come again, um, 
he was refused his visa. And it, we learned in, one, in an article, one particularly right-wing newspaper with good connections with the Irish government, the Irish government has still given no official explanation for the refusal of the visa, uh, but articles in uh, leading Irish newspapers uh, quoted unnamed spokespeople from the US Embassy saying that they had made it clear to the Irish government that they didn't want Ibrahim Moussaoui in the country, and that was it. He didn't come in. Uh, so, uh, not only are we facilitating the US war machine in Iraq, but we also have a very serious attack on the basic right to, to freedom of expression and debate and the right of the, the anti-war movement in Ireland uh, to organise, uh, which the Irish government uh, are... Um, <laughs> okay, well, uh, I've got to finish, uh, which the Irish government are involved in. So, uh, this, however, is the important point is to say this is being done in defiance of the wishes of the vast majority of Irish uh, people. Over 150,000 people took to the streets uh, in opposition to the Iraq war in 2003 with a central demand that Irish airports should not be used to facilitate uh, the US war machine. The latest opinion polls uh, indicate a clear majority and have done right since 2003. The vast majority of people in Ireland oppose the policy of collaboration uh, with the US, uh, with the US uh, war machine. Um, Tragically, however, that has not been reflected consistently by the, the main political parties uh, in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, much like the United States, the two biggest parties are like the Republicans and the Democrats, conservative right parties, pro-war, pro-militarisation, uh, and have endorsed the policy of collaboration with the US war machine. The smaller left parties had for, have formed alliance with the anti-war movement over recent years, which have helped mobilize anti-war sentiment. Tragically, as was mentioned in, in the situation in Germany, the Green Party, that were quite an important component of that, have done a terrible about uh, turn uh, since the, ra the last general election, where they've now entered government with Fianna Fáil and have dropped the policy of opposition to the US troops going through uh, uh, Shannon and are now effectively supporting uh, the US uh, war machine. However, the opposition uh, of the Irish public uh, continues and we continue to uh, uh, organise. And I just finish by just mentioning two practical um, aspects of, where, of, of things that the anti-war movement are involved in at the moment. First of all, nine anti-war activists from Derry are facing trial in uh, January, the trial has been put off now till January, for the fact that they uh, decommissioned Raytheon's headquarters in Derry because Raytheon were producing components for the US and Israeli war machine uh, during the Israeli assaults. Those, pe those people are facing trial and need your support. And there's a pamphlet being produced which is on sale outside, with all proceeds which are going to their support campaign. So we hope uh, people will uh, purchase those and uh, help support the Raytheon uh, 9. But also, sometime next year, probably in May, the only, treat the only referendum that will take place anywhere in Europe on the new European Reform Treaty will take place in Ireland. So essentially a European political battle will be fought on Irish soil. Such is the contempt for democracy in Europe. None of the rest of you will get a chance to vote. Because of the Irish Constitution, the Irish public have to have a right to vote on this. And it's very important we win in opposing a treaty that will essentially inst further institutionalise the militarisation of Europe, the European arms industry, and institutionalise the links between the European Union and NATO, i.e. the US uh, war machine. So it's very important you help us with that campaign. Uh, so, Thanks very much. And like the, like the rest of you, uh, a big focus for us over the next few months has to be to get to unite all together for the biggest possible mobilisation on the fifth anniversary of the occupation of Iraq uh, to ensure both that they don't attack Iran uh, and that uh, uh, we, we play our part in supporting the Iraqi resistance in ending the occupation of that country.